All right, mandolin friends, today I wanna to show you a beautiful three-part old-time fiddle tune in the key of C major with some crooked timing going on in the middle. This one's called Farewell to Try On, and it goes like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> bittersweet melody, right? And the story behind the tune is also bittersweet. Apparently the main source for this tune comes from Mac Blaylock in Mentone, Alabama from the early 1900s, who learned this from his great uncle Joe, who supposedly wrote this after being laid off at the mill in Tryon, Georgia. But there's some great modern versions of this tune now as well. I first heard this from the Daryl Anger record, E and A. Joe K. Walsh is playing some beautiful mandolin on there, link in the description below. But you know, the haunting nature of this melody, as well as the uneven, kind of unusual space that we have in the middle section of this tune, makes it one of my favorites to play. And I'm really excited to get to show you how to play it as well. So when you're ready, grab your mandolin. And as always, we're gonna start out with the chords and the form to this song. Again, this tune is in the key of C major. We have three chords that you might already know, but let's review them for good measure. First up with some open chord shapes, we have a C major chord. Then we have an F major chord. And lastly, we have our good old G major chord. And then of course, if you'd rather use those chop shapes, here is your C chop. And then for the F chop, we're actually gonna use that same shape that we used earlier. But we're gonna mute our open A string with our free pinky to get that chop sound. And then lastly, your G chop shape. Now for the form of this tune, we have three parts that we're working with, A, B, and C. And this A section is pretty straight ahead, right? We just have an eight measure section that repeats. We start off with a C chord for two measures. And then an F chord for two measures. Back to C for two measures then F for two measures. Those eight measures are gonna repeat before getting to the B section here, which is a little bit different. You might notice the change in time signature here on this second measure. We start off in 4-4, four, four, but on that second measure, we get to 2-4 just for one measure for getting back to 4-4 four, four for the next three measures. You'll notice that happens again on the second line of the B section, right? So this makes counting the chord progression a little bit trickier, but see if you can follow along with me. So we're playing a C chord for the first two measures, including that measure on two, four, and then we're getting to an F chord for the next three measures. It goes like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then again. You might notice that there are no repeats on this B section as well. We just play through it once before moving on to the C part, which gets back to a more standard structure. Here we have an eight measure section with repeats again, and the chords are really simple. We have three measures of C to start with. A quick G, back to C. Same thing again on the second line. then that C part is gonna repeat again before starting over at the beginning of the tune to play through the whole form again and again and again. So try out these chords on your own time. When you're ready, we're gonna check out the melody next and we'll start off just by listening to this tune again. One, two, one, two, three, four.
time to dive into this transcription. If you want your own personal PDF copy, you can grab it over on my Patreon page, link in the cards above, or just follow along here in this video. And we're gonna start off with the A section. Our first two measure phrase goes like this. We have a two beat pickup here. Then we're starting with a quick slide from your ring finger on the fifth fret to the seventh fret with that open E string ringing out. From there, we're fingering most of the rest of the A section in this higher position with your index finger landing on the third fret, but we still use some open strings as well, so watch out. So after the slide, we'll stay up the neck. But we still have an open E string at the end on an upstroke. The only other trick is this hammer-on triplet from the five to the six on the A string. We're doing a down for the hammer-on, up on the last note of the triplet, resuming your alternate picking on the down. Let's give it a shot. Next two measures. Still up the neck, but now we're using our open A string. We start off with a little ragtime rhythm, down, up, up, down. Another hammer on triplet there. The next two measures are very similar to the first two measures with a slight rhythmic variation, right? We're doing that ragtime rhythm again. Remember your pick strokes will be down, up, up, down. Then these last two measures also sound a little bit familiar with a bit of a different ending, right? up, down again, and then we're using the next open A string as an opportunity to shift down with our ring finger on the fifth fret of the D string so that we can finger the rest of the phrase in our normal first position. The only other trick is we end the whole phrase on an upstroke, which is a little bit different. And that's your A section. Spend some time working this out. When you're ready, let's see if we can play through this whole section once together with the transcription and the backing track. A one, two, three, four. when playing the tune, we'll repeat that A section, but for now, let's move on to the B and check out the weird timing that we have here. Let's try the first two measures with that time signature change. Here we start off with a hammer-on triplet that's gonna come up again and again in this tune. It's an ascending triplet where we're going from our open G string up to your C note on the fifth fret. Same idea with your right hand, down for the first two notes, up for the third, resuming your alternate picking on the downstroke. And then when we get to this time signature change, I know it seems a little bit weird, but we're not changing the rhythmic value of any of the notes. So you can just keep reading your eighth notes as eighth notes and your quarter notes as quarter notes. In other words, it's kind of like we're just removing half of a measure from that second measure before moving on to the F chord. So right after the crooked measure, we're doing a slide up to an F major double stop where we're barring down with our index finger on the third fret on the D and the A strings. So we're just holding this double stop and letting it sustain through the whole measure, tying over the bar line through the first beat of the next measure before playing some single note melodies again. One, two, three, four, one. Then at the end of this line, we're doing a similar shift on our open A string with your ring finger down to the fifth fret of the D string so you can finger the rest of the melody in the first position. And then the next line of the B section is just an exact repeat of what we just did. So let's see if we can play through both lines of this B section together. And that's the whole B section, right? No repeats. And with that hard part behind us, we're getting to the C part here, which is a piece of cake. Check out the first two measures. Start off with an open G string and a slide from your ring finger on the third fret of the D to the fifth fret. Then it's pretty straightforward after that, so try it with me here. 
next two measures start out very similarly here. Check this out. Another familiar ending to a phrase with that upstroke on the dotted quarter note. Phrase three is very similar to the beginning of the melody. We're not doing the slide this time and we're adding some extra eighth notes to the end of the melody to set us up for the turnaround. Then the last two measures start out with that familiar hammer on triplet again. Otherwise, not too tricky. Check it out with me. You got this now. Let's string all four of those phrases together, play through this C part once with that backing track. It's time to put all that in context now and see if we can play through the whole tune from start to finish. We have two A's, one B section, two C's. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. right? But you may have noticed that the video is not over yet. For you extra credit mandolin nerds out there, we're going to take this same melody and see if we can play it in some different octaves like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> So this A section melody works pretty well in a lower octave. We're gonna start off with the first two measures on our G and D strings like this. So now we're doing a slide with your open G string ringing out from the first fret on your D string to the second fret. Another slight difference is for the triplet that we have in the second full measure, we're doing a pull off instead of a hammer on. So we're playing a down for the first open D string then we're doing a pull off from the first fret to your open string again. Then we have a downstroke on the C to get us back on track with our alternate picking. Otherwise it's pretty similar, right? Phrase two here should also sound familiar. Again, now we're doing another pull off triplet instead of a hammer on triplet. Same idea. Phrase three here, similar to the first two phrases. Again, we're just adding in that ragtime rhythm as a variation. And 
And then for the turnaround phrase, since we've run out of real estate with our open G string, we can't play the same melody an octave lower. So we're gonna have to hop up to the original octave to finish out the phrase like this. But I think that still sounds like the melody, right? So let's try this out. All right, now is your time to shine. Let's see if we can play through that lower octave A section, all four of those phrases together now. One, two, a one, two, three, four. All right, once you've repeated that A section a few times, we'll move on to the B part. And this one is a little bit trickier because instead of going down an octave, we can't really because the original melody starts on your lowest possible note. So now we're gonna have to hop up an octave and change a few notes to work around that triplet. Instead of using the exact same notes for the triplets and having to use your dreaded pinky to hammer on, what I like to do here is change the notes ever so slightly to get the same effect. So now I'm hammering on from the second fret on the D string to the fifth fret using your open A string and ending up on the same note, that C note right here on the third fret of the A string. So after the triplet, we'll use the open E string as an opportunity to shift up so that we can get that eighth fret with your pinky on the E string. After the crooked measure, instead of doing a double stop like we did in the original melody, we're just gonna slide up with our pinky to the eighth fret for the same effect. We're hanging out here for another four beats plus one across the bar line into the next measure before we play this melody. And here we're changing the melody a little bit so that we don't have to reach higher than our eighth fret. A little bit of a cheat there, but I think it works pretty well. So here's that whole F major chord passage. One, two, three, four, one. And then same as before, the next line of the B section is exactly the same as what I just played there. So when you're ready, let's see if we can play through that whole B section together. One more part to go, same idea here with the C part. We're hopping up the octave and playing the melody here. Check out this first two measure phrase. Just a little slide here with your middle finger from the first fret to the third fret on the E string. The rest is a piece of cake. Well, we do have to shift a little bit here for the next two measures. Check this out. So after the third beat here with your middle finger on the third fret, I'm using my middle finger again now on the fifth fret to finger the rest of the phrase up here. Still using my open E string though to make things a little easier. For the third phrase, we'll move our middle finger back down to the third fret and play it down here. And then for the last two measures, we're gonna change our hammer-on triplet again to do this one that we did in the B section. Starting on the second fret of your D string. And then using some open E strings as we move up the neck again. All right, your turn. See if you can play through all four of those phrases of the C part and this higher octave now. All right, pencils down, last challenge here. Now let's see if we can play through the whole tune with these octave variations, starting with the low part on the A section, then we have the higher versions of the B and the C mashed all together at a slower rate. Sounds like this. One, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs>
Alright mandolin friends, now it is up to you to master these chords, the melody, and the octave variations, and to be creative with them. See if you can mash together the original melody and these octaves together in different ways for fun. And uh, who knows what's gonna happen. <laughs> By the way, have you seen our other recent lesson on the tune Happy Hollow? If you like this one, I think you might like that one as well, as well as some of the other lessons that you see here on screen. We got a whole catalog of material here on the channel and over on the Patreon page. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing and becoming a patron, and I'll see you in the next video real soon.